All right, so the destructive phase is over. We've got clean walls to work with. I've been spending the morning measuring and making little round marks. And we're now ready to start the constructive phase. I'll finally get some value out of this ridiculous expensive drill. So uh, the layout I'm going to do for the shelving, uh, I, I, I was very, very aroused by making, by mounting these things. Haha, <laughs> mounting. Uh, when I did this, so this is really overdone. The, the reason I've mounted just a ridiculous amount of these is because these walls are very uh, porous, they're, they're not very strong, and even though these are torqued down very hard, many of them actually wobble around slightly, so I just wanted ridiculously for mounting. However, that is to be uh, remedied by the fact that I'm actually using a proper SDS drill now. This makes much tighter holes than the old hammer drill, so I think I'm going to be able to make holes which actually fit the screw inserts, and I'm sure there's somebody who's going to hate me for using these, but I am using plastic inserts. That's uh, just because nothing else bites in these walls. You, you, you cannot use a concrete screw or anything, it'll just rip a chunk of wall out. It's just ridiculously soft material. So, yeah, I, I've gone for a shelf spacing of 90 centimeters, uh, well, shelf mounting spacing, and I'm going to start here at. Uh, which one was it? I believe 20 centimeters. Then I've got uh, 110 centimeters, and then we've got uh, 200, and uh, that's going to be 290. And uh, this is where the mountings for the uh, this shelf is going to end. So I'm going to have shelf spacing pretty much the entire wall, and uh, on this wall I'm going to put uh, two. Uh, 1.6 meter tall mains just running pretty much the entire height of a wall and uh, that's gonna, gonna leave some wiggle room in the corner here depending on how I want to main stuff uh, these two mains here since uh, the bench is just going to stretch out uh, to about 1.8 meters or so uh, and uh, the shelf is mounted at 2 meters are going to be tall enough to cover the entire height of this wall which is about 1.2, 1.3 meters. So I, I can pretty much turn this into a very uh, hard, tall shelf for what you're able to achieve in this room without blocking the windows. So I think it's going to turn out pretty well. I'm still not entirely sure where I'm going to uh, put my com uh, component to cabinet mains, uh, but uh, really that doesn't matter since uh, I can just uh, bolt some uh, boards and stuff onto these uh, rails after I've made them. You can, they're, they're pretty thick like a, a bit over a millimeter thick uh, steel of some sort so you can just uh, drill and tap some holes in these if you want to uh, bolt some board into or make some uh, DIY mains which just go in there. Uh, it's a little nicer either way than uh, drilling into this awful awful soft wall so as, as long as I don't have to do that, I'm happy. But yeah, safety goggles on, earplugs on, well, let's get drilling. I would catch capture time lapse, but since the fancy cameras and the warranty repair service, I can't. Sorry. And there we go. All the holes have been drilled, and the plastic inserts have been inserted. The drilling took like ten minutes, which. Uh, is a remarkable improvement over using the bloody hammer drill that would have taken hours. So it went pretty well. We got some minor crackage here, which I was a bit afraid of, but uh, it really can't be helped. It just, the moment I touched it, it went snap. But I'm thinking it's not going to be a major issue. I guess we'll see when the shelf comes down. So I have intentionally fit all of these so they stick out a bit because due to the way they're designed, uh, if they, if the screw isn't perfectly inserted all the way into this, uh, they're not going to grab on as hard as they might. So you can't just, uh, since these shelf units are uh, somewhat thick, you cannot just have have it sit flush because the screw wouldn't reach as far as it has to. 
but that's no big deal. You know how to deal with it. Makes no difference. Time to get the shelves up. Right, and here's how I actually make sure these uh, plastic inserts don't go all the way into the wall. I just take a welding clamp, clamp it just around the neck. Not too hot. I just drive it in. Halfway. Like so, because now it's actually bitten into the concrete a bit. And uh, once I've done the rest of them, I can just uh, harm, use force against uh, the concrete rather than just a plastic insert and drive it into a wall properly. And now you can see that it's mounted firmly and the plastic inserts are not flush against the wall. Meaning the screws have gone all the way to the end of the insert making sure they're expanding as much as they're going to and these are very very sturdily mounted I would dare to rest my whole weight on that it is rather amazing though uh, how, how big a quality difference there is between SDS holes and hammer drill holes because I used a, a similar identical size drill bit from the same manufacturer when drilling the holes for this except I used a hammer drill and these are so floppy I mean, if I take the, the torque setting which was slipping on uh, those, I'm pretty sure any of these is just going to spin. I could do that on any of them. And that, that, the, the mates use the same technique, uh, except I use a different drill. It's, it's just staggering, really. Absolutely staggering how the right tool makes the, makes the job so much better. Ah, uh, there we go. All the shelving is mounted, or rather, the racks are. So I managed to get the heights pretty decent. Uh, there's uh, not uh, any discrepancy between those two, even though it might look like that on camera. These are purposefully a bit angled upwards. So I got all of these ones uh, perfectly uh, in order, or close enough in a way level to, uh, for, for, for my purposes. I'm not sure if I've quite managed these two, though that looks a bit extreme, so I might have done something very wrong when measuring this up, which is curious because the reference I used for uh, marking the holes was the bottom of uh, that one there. That should be the same as there. Weird. Oh well. You need to learn that nothing you made in a, an old bunker like this is ever going to be straight. And if it is straight, it's not going to line up with anything else. So that's not a big deal. I can live with these being slightly out of whack. So that means I can finally start to think about uh, building the desk because now I've, I'm done doing shit that's going to go behind the desk. So I'm going to bring in some materials and uh, we'll see what we can come up with. Alright so for the frame of the benches uh, I've got a, a whole bunch of these old rack doors these are from special size racks so they were utterly useless the actual rack part of these I've cut up to use as my solar panel mains they uh, leave the doors absolutely useless so uh, they, they have this really nice rather sturdy stainless steel of some sort frame and all the stuff in the middle just pretty much pops out. Uh, so the only real hard work I've got to do is to grind off these horrible nudges in the end where the hinges have gone and these are pretty much just going to be a sturdy uh, welded metal frame. They're very straight on account of being doors and not floors so I think it's going to turn out right nicely. Uh, they pretty much exactly the, the dimensions of the larger of my desk surfaces. I think they're like 181 wide by 79 uh, wide or so and uh, yeah that's like a couple of centimeters just exactly the way you want a frame under your desk to be. So let's get to grinding. Ah it's Chinese here and drill bit number two for this project. All right we're starting to get a bit of a mock-up going uh, but I have made a mistake when measuring the board I've got laid out here. I only checked the width once ever and I went, oh yeah, it's 185. 
it's 180. So these 183 wide frames don't fit at all as well as I was hoping that they would. So I'm gonna have to chop a bit off here in order to make this fit properly, which is a shame because I've already drilled all the holes. Oh well, things happen. But uh, beyond that, I've finally gotten all the holes drilled. When the best drills you've got are labeled a Kotec from Klaus Olsen, you have done something wrong in your life, and I'm gonna have to get some more proper drills, clearly, because normal stainless steel of some, some sort of another sh really shouldn't be killing your drills. Uh, but yeah, for the time being, I'll have to go out outside of the dark and grind this up. Uh, never mind that, actually. Fucking a side of a cold, dark, bitter autumn night. Alright, yeah, I have now recycled some of the 2x4 which was bolted to the wall in order to make some risers for this. Uh, since uh, these legs are rather obviously not adjustable and they're about uh, 69 centimeters tall, which would make the desk just over 70. And uh, that's what my old one was, and that was way too low for a workbench. So far up on that, it, uh, it totals out at about uh, 76 centimeters, which I think is going to be pretty okay. Well, pretty much ready to flip this thing over. I'm not going to mount the legs before I've flipped it over, because I... Uh, don't like the fact that it would just break them in one direction or another. Instead I'm going to flip it over and lift it up on the legs and hope that I've actually got the strength to do that because the thing is getting rather massive. There's a fair amount of metal and wood in there. Alright, and here you can see how I've propped it up to my the legs and if this thing doesn't weigh 50 kilos it's bloody well over 40. It is ridiculously massive. I can barely lift it. So, this is how I've done it. I've just, uh, first I propped it up on this uh, metal frame, then I got another couple of table legs and put uh, double spaces there to give it just enough wiggle room to actually fit the proper legs on there. So then I mounted just four screws into the two by fours, and this end is ready to go down. Well, maybe I can even get it on camera. And there we have it! I couldn't resist the urge to just instantly test sit it and I am uh, quite happy with the results. Uh, it is uh, certainly a step up of the old bench. Well, we're not done yet, but still. And it, it is uh, tall enough for me to actually sit and have a reasonably, have my face reasonably close to the bench without having to bend over ruining my back in the process. So this is not bad. So now doing the other bench is not going to be as big a project. So I think we can reuse some pre-cut pieces of wood to make the, the rises and uh, it doesn't have as much metal work to do since I've uh, hopefully haven't screwed its metal piece up. So let's just assemble that, uh, get it bolted to the wall, and uh, stop building shelves. All right, and there is the other half. Well, other one third, two thirds, three quarters, something like that. It's smaller and uh, lighter, and I opted to install the legs upside down on it since uh, it is much more manageable. It's uh, smaller, has less of everything and it weighs, I mean ju just the board weighs considerable less. I cannot lift this board uh, on its own if I'm grabbing it by the sides whereas I can lift this one and that's a remarkable difference. So it's a very similar in construction except this just has an L shape since I don't have any prefab frames which fit very well so eh, it doesn't really matter this is not intended to see as heavy duty as the other one. I also managed to goof up a bit and uh, leave this piece of metal there when I made the frame. So this leg is slightly further out than that leg, but shh, don't tell anyone. It's our little secret. So now I'm just going to flip this over, shove it in the corner, and then probably make some 
SDS sound, so while I may make a couple of main points, uh, probably just one in VAT axis, one in VAT axis, uh, to stop the tables from wobbling around. Since they don't have any cross members on the legs, and I don't intend to add any, uh, they're going to be a bit uh, uh, wiggly, uh, in, in, especially uh, along the long axis. If I, uh, it's fairly stupid, but you know, if if I shake that around. It, it does wobble a bit, so it needs to be uh, attached to the wall. Uh, I do not wish to just shove them up against the wall because uh, I want to be able to just root any wiring behind here. I want a pretty much five centimeter gap uh, between the wall and the table. That just makes life so much easier uh, in such an electronically uh, focused workshop such as mine. New day dawns, and I'm about to bolt the two desks together in order to give it a bit more structure. And uh, you really can see how incredibly non straight this house is. It truly is by curious or worse, because uh, I've got these uh, two by two uh, spaces uh, put in on all the edges to make sure I get an even space towards the wall on all sides. So we've got this one's not touching, and so I've tied the desks up. This one over there is touching tight, that one is not touching, and uh, that one is touching. So the wall, this corner, is uh, far from 90 degrees, or rather the thickness of the wall is varying a, a, along the length of a wall, so I cannot actually uh, fit an evenly spaced L-shaped disc in this, no matter how much I tried. And of course, I'm going to prioritize uh, this seam here being straight and flush, which you can see it rather well is, except the height of the desks is not exactly even, uh, because uh, you, you cannot get away from the fact that uh, there's going to have to be a couple of spaces uh, under the legs uh, on this floor, since it's just not straight. I'll have to use the water level to adjust that once I've got them bolted together. But uh, now I just uh, obviously used the uh, strap there to tighten these guys together. It's reasonably tight, however it is tight so I want to go without risking damage to the point of contact of the corner. Now I'm just going to grab a couple of clamps, clamp them together even, and uh, use these metal plates to pop them together with some short stubby screws and hopefully that's going to make this whole thing into one very sturdy unit. Well, right and there we go. I figured six uh, screws per plate should be enough to keep these together and uh, I'm gonna keep all the clamps and straps on well, I'm, until I'm done fucking with it and we really are getting close to being that because as you can see I've drawn out the SDS drill and uh, that's because we're just about to do the final affixing to the wall because I got to three of these uh, uh, weird clamp thingies or main thingies with one of the scrapped desks. So these are two pieces. We've got uh, this piece here which I mounted to the desk and uh, then we've got uh, two machine threads on the piece that goes to the wall and two M5s keeping that together so you can actually unbolt this if you want to which is uh, going to be a really neat feature. Uh, so I'm just going to mark out some holes for that and uh, uh, level the desk and then drill. Rather, I'm going to level the desk uh, drill the, uh, mark the holes and drill them because uh, uh, these uh, obviously are dependent on the height of the desk so I, if I made these uneven it's not going to fit properly or they're going to bend and be all horrid uh, when I actually level the desk and that's no good we want to be perfectionist here so uh, time to get out of the spirit level my toy spirit level from Lidl which has leveled everything else in here and remedy that. All right, we are going places. So I have now bolt the desk to the uh, wall uh, with uh, three main points. You can see more there, and I have uh, shimmed the legs with uh, M10 washers to make sure everything's perfectly straight and it is bloody well straight. So, I've started to play around with shelving layouts, and that really is the creative part. So, uh, I obviously want to have pretty much all my gear 
on the right side there. Uh, I am regretting not mounting more of these shelf holders here because it's going to get a bit tricky. I might have to uh, mount a short one there just to enable me to have these corner shelves kind of on their own and the long, long, longer shelves going along the length of a wall on their own. But that's really no big deal since I've got plenty of 6 foot 6 mil shelving consoles to mount. So the main attraction here is this uh, uh, really weirdly shaped uh, uh, desktop which I got uh, with the others. This was probably some like 1,500 euro thing when it was new and I've promptly zinged off a few pieces of it to make it fit my requirements. So I have cut it to a depth of, uh, I believe this is 50 centimeters and uh, the same goes there, 50 centimeters uh, and that makes it pretty symmetrical. It uh, fits rather perfectly in the corner there. So I've come up to this size by just realizing I'm going to be sitting pretty much here where we're sitting right now. Not really quite forced into a corner but pretty close. Perfect to bang my feet against that as I always have. But that's fine. And if I take my hand and do that, it's following the tip of my finger very well right now. And that's just going to make it all awesome to just scoot over, flickety flop all the switches on my gear. And I'm thinking I'm going to do a similar thing up here. Because uh, since I've got uh, this to use as a template, uh, with all the fancy angles and what have you, which I could never ever in a million years manage to perfect on my own, uh, I'm just going to take this down and uh, uh, copy it onto my old bench top here because I should have enough area on these to actually create one or two more of those and uh, that's just going to give me a beautiful quarter shelf there where I can just rather ergonomically store all my gear. Now I am uh, furthermore regretting my idiocy when mounting the old shelves here in that I didn't consider that I could use the longer units to go off the, go off the side of a wall and because I'm pretty much limited to this as a top shelf it's it gets a bit ugly really uh, if I want to use this as a top shelf since it's uh, coming out under this thing whereas this wall is uh, riding clear so uh, it's a bit of a bad planning I also am regretting not mounting a third one of these uh, I guess the lesson to be taken away is uh, don't cheap out on things you may need more of. Uh, but we'll make do, we always have. And I think I'm going to start by just cloning this thing to uh, give me some breathing room to think about the weird shelf situation I've put myself up for here. It's... Oh, I, just want, I, I want to make something there. But it's not going to be ugly however I do it. It's not, it's going to be ugly, however I do it. Alright, the template has been made, which is going to turn out slightly smaller in this direction. So, let's bring over a brand new craptacular jigsaw. Alright, we are starting to get somewhere. So I've got the clone cut out and a much simpler top shelf made. So you can see here how the uh, desk I made the clone out of was uh, not uh, not quite wide enough to actually uh, clone that, but uh, that's turned out rather well I think because uh, since these are mostly going to be gear shelves I want them to be tight and low so this is going to be useful for putting stuff like bottles of fluid, uh, bottles of fluid above the electronics bench, how smart of me. But yeah, stuff like that, clamping lamps onto what have you, it's going to work out rather well, I think. And uh, the top shelf, uh, I just cut out of a piece of my old workbench, which is why it's all horrible and bent and ugly, and I don't care. Uh, and this is a much simpler design, uh, where I just measured out to 45 centimeters here, 70 centimeters in the other end, made a straight cut and uh, placed it up here. So. 
It's not straight, as you can see, it's much, much wider in the out end there. And that's, of course, because we've got this... I still have this giant blob of stuff which I can't really reach to the back of because I'm tiny. Uh, but uh, with this lad, I can... You know, I can just shove, uh, I can fit one of my 4311s up there and pretty much have that entire area occupied by something useful and, you know, use this part which is actually kind of within my reach. So, I think this is pretty much the layout I'm going to go with for this part. Uh, there's uh, uh, almost f a bit over 30 centimeters here, about 27 or so between those and, uh, I don't know, more. And that bit between those, uh, and that's mostly just to, in order to get this, you know, up to use as much height as possible since that's in short uh, supply in this house. So, that's nice. I'm gonna let that sit unbolted for a while while I try to figure out what to do with the rest of the shelving. So, there's a bit of an issue, of course, with uh, this arrangement here when I've only got one console here. Uh, mounting stuff running the entire length of a wall is going to be a bit annoying since I either have to mount another console about there in order to uh, get it to get another support in here uh, or I uh, have to run the shelf at different heights in order to not uh, cross with the uh, corner shelf but uh, that's going to be ugly and that's pretty much going to build a wall of mains there which isn't really productive so, the other idea I'm just toying with is to pretty much just leave that clear and uh, that would give me, you know, space for computer monitors and stuff uh, if I need to and, you know, I can make, put some small shelving going across there if I want to for tiny things like huh, small tools, what have you and just have the, like, big shelves over there yeah, that table's of course going to go away, it's just uh, I haven't been bothered to carry it. I don't know where to bother, we'll carry it somewhere other than this room uh, and uh, uh, just build shelves there and there, have them intersect uh, in the corner there uh, to, to the best of my ability. So I think I'm going to use as much of my uh, original shelf bits as possible shelf bench bench bits as possible for that I've got you know these are fairly large pieces uh, if you compare look at them to the wall there this is pretty much the perfect width to just span across there shring 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 a couple of times I'll probably not make them super deep like uh, how deep is that going to be that's going to be the old electronics bench so that's going to be 80 centimeters deep giving me two 40 centimeter shelves Here's another 40 centimeter piece which used to go there. This is the actual piece. Could you imagine that after all these years I've still got the complete board? Uh, and uh, that thing's uh, like 2.4 meters by 90. So I can make 45 centimeters sh meter wide shelves out of that. I'm going to turn out rather nice, I think. They're going to be all bent and wonky and horrid because it's old stock. <laughs> that's that's not bending because it's leaning against the wall. It's just bent from old age. Oh, that looks so horrible. <laughs> right, yeah, we're, we're, we're not fussy here. It is the kingdom of trash after all. So, I need to figure out where to go, get rid of that desk. All right, and there we have the first shelving unit cut off, and I've pretty much ready to call the night. It's about uh, midnight, and I have well beyond reached my goal for the day, which was to uh, just get the desk done and the shelves kind of started on. So it's been a good day. I haven't uh, come up with any horrible. Uh, downsides to this arrangement, so I'm probably going to bolt that together properly tomorrow and uh, we'll see how it works in practice. It does look fancy if, I'd, if I could have been bothered to actually give that a proper uh, bend there, that would have made it look real, even professional, but eh, I can't be bothered. It's good enough as it is. As it is. And uh, 
This stuff I am really debating uh, over how to set it up. Uh, as you can see, I've put a component cabinet here, and these fit very well on these shelves uh, in many configurations. Uh, they do fit all of them here pretty well. If I just have uh, this shelf dedicated to component cabinets, it would be pretty decent and uh, they would be kind of blocking the window, but that's no big deal. Who needs daylight anyway? Uh, so that's a bit of a thinker. Uh, beyond that, though, the shelving levels and stuff down at the floor level is going to be a bit finicky because I've still got you know a million of these guys to find a place for and uh, that's not always the easiest thing. Uh, I want to get the wheeled one that I put together uh, from the it's sitting in, in the uh, rough workshop at the moment where it shouldn't be and I'm not sure where I should actually put that if it's gonna go somewhere underneath that. It's 66 centimeters deep and the desk is 90 so it could a decent, do a decent job of just living underneath here, right in front of my feet. Uh, but I'm, I'm not sure I'm gonna have to try it once I can actually fit it in the room. Uh, what's not going to change from the previous set of is my two IKEA helmets are going to live there. They're 28 centimeters wide, so they're gonna fit pretty decently in this hole here. Uh, the biggest difference between now and before is they're not going to be the support in the desk where I can actually move them if I so desire. Uh, there we are for reference, that's an IKEA helmet. Cheapo metal cabinet, pretty decent for just keeping tools and if you're not made out of money. Uh, I've also put up some of this uh, cable ducting stuff as I go along. This is just relatively cheap. It's it's cheap quality, expensive money since I bought it locally in a pinch. So I've got uh, a piece of it here by the power outlet bolted to the side of this uh, console so I can just uh, take wiring from these power outlets and uh, it just comes out on the floor there, runs on the floor and like I can be bothered to actually channel it there and then it can go up on in the desk here I've got one along, going along the entire length of this side and one also going up along that console there for the shelves and uh, it's a bit messy. Let's see if we can. Oh, yeah, we can see well. Uh, there's one mounted on the far side of the desk there, and uh, on this one, I've just got one mounted between the two by fours there, since there's just too much shit attached to the bottom of the uh, board to really do it decently. I've got a fair amount of electrical stuff to set up once we get that far. I've got a big bag of. Uh, cheaper electrical stuff, which I have misplaced, but I'm going to be mounting some power outlets uh, on the uh, desks, uh, uh, like bolted down proper power outlets, uh, which I will then connect to uh, all of my uh, 10 outlet extension cords to, just to make it a bit neater in case I need to steal one of those or re rearrange it or something. I'm also going to bolt some of the probably like one of those 10 outlet strips of a top shelf there or something and just have all the cords going down to whatever gear needs them. <sighs> but now it's night time. Alright, moving forward, uh, I've uh, moved on a bit to doing the actual uh, bench uh, workspace parts because that's going to affect uh, uh, the in my mouth. That's going to affect uh, uh, the cuts I, I've got from any to make the shelves since I wanted that piece of the board there to main stuff to and uh, if, if I was going to make some like shelf up here which I don't think I'm gonna I'm just gonna use my awesome old battery charger cases here for the sole shelf to keep this area bright and nice and comfortable uh, so this board is going to be a considerable upgrade from uh, what I've had before i.e. just plain wall and a bunch of crap uh, I, as you can see I've made in my upside down tomato cans to it. I've just punched a couple of holes, put two screws in there. They're sitting there pretty decent. I love those things. They're fantastic. Uh, so I'm I'm considering how to uh, do the layout of this part. Uh, that shelf's pretty much 
decent as it is, but I'm thinking I'm gonna put a whole shit in the filing cabinets or well draw a box whatever have you things have a floor level here which is going to prevent this thing from having too many low shelves and that's because I tested the depth of the rolling folding cabinet thing I've got and it would just be incredibly uncomfortable to have it under the desk there so that's a no go and having it in the corner here wouldn't really be too good of a solution either. Uh, my helmets are gonna go pretty much to the almost all the way into the corner there, so it would be like crammed away underneath there, uh, incredibly inaccessible and pretty much useless. And also, it would bring back the issue of this corner being damp and dark and all hard. I'd really like to keep this area clear. So, yeah, uh, we, you know, space constraints. It's a tiny room for what I'm trying to do with it, uh, but uh, we're going to be moving on. Now, I'm thinking that sometime in next week I'm going to actually go and buy a 15mm or so drill and some pipe and actually uh, pull electrics uh, into uh, these two storerooms here and turn the further, furthermost one into uh, a server tech room uh, because I don't want to have a server uh, wasting space and making noise in here. It's just not what this room is intended for and uh, we'll have a peek inside these uh, this one's actually already got some nice shelves in it and so I don't mind having this as a storeroom it works well, I cleaned it up very recently uh, but uh, this one which is pretty much inaccessible right now it just has one shelf and uh, my laundry basket in it so uh, th this is pretty much unused and that's mostly because it's incredibly dark no lights, no electrics, no nothing in there so pulling network and uh, electrics in there would make it a rather excellent server room tucked away in the corner, it's nice and cool underground not too prone to flooding although I'm gonna have to put it on like high plastic pieces just to make sure I don't rust the bottom of my case out in case it gets damp so hmm that's it for a moment back to work this is the curse of a man cave I've got a million brand new desks and shelves and what have you what am I doing for work on an old set of office cabinets and here's a rare look into my uh, uh, Helmers, my uh, quick access cabinet, which I always have on the right side. So I, I've got this ordered in uh, uh, the, the white drawers on top, and that's for cleaner stuff. The cleaner the thing, the higher up it is in the box. And uh, the red drawers are for more heavy duty, dirty stuff, and they go in the bottom. The further down, the more dirty it is, more or less. So on this one, the top drawers for uh, tape exclusively, all kinds. Uh, second drawers is for measuring, all kinds of measuring equipment, rulers, well, what is this, what you get? And the third one's for paper and paper accessories, scissors, a stapler, hole punch, pens, all, all that kind of thing. Uh, then, then we'll get to the, uh, it's labeled a can slash tube, so this is for any kind of fluid which you, I don't need to really have. On this thing where well, you know we've got uh, thermal grease, uh, epoxy, all kinds of glues, gre grease, exhaust paste, just just things, well that's old wood glue into the laser printer you go. Uh, believe that which is uh, cleaning stuff which uh, really should be in a higher drawer but this is the way it turned out. Uh, rags, brushes, Stuff like that for cleaning anything. Other bottom drawers, hammers and beating. So yeah, chisel, hammers, hard drive, which actually belongs in this one. It's just to come out. So let's go for this one as well. So top drawer, this one's multimeter, all kinds of multimeters, uh, clamp meter, light meter, anything for measuring stuff. Oh, well, I need to put the brake on these. Second, screwdrivers, bits, all kinds of screwdrivers and bits. Tongs. Uh, what's that in English? Uh, so sockets and wrenches. Don't have a lot of those in the electronic shop. Drills, saws, and uh, 
a sandpaper. This is real, real edges, a bit too wide. But uh, the hard drives are for putting some sandpaper on them. These are old drives which will just uh, turn and run indefinitely, so I can use them as little miniature sanders if I want to. Very useful. And bottom drawer, miscellaneous. Uh, here I've got uh, a compression test, aluminium foil, a couple of cheapo tap sets. And uh, what are these things? I'm not sure about that. Uh, random crap in that one. Need to go through it. There you go. My helmet. All oh, right, another day is starting to draw to a close, and uh, we really are starting to get something resembling a bit of a workshop, don't we? So thus far, I've gotten all the shelves m designed and mounted, which is uh, excellent, lovely to have that out of the way. And uh, I've also moved this uh, big cabinet thing into uh, this room. So uh, that thing down there I had built a while ago, I had some wheels on it. And today I've actually ch changed the wheels for these big wheels, the same as went on the other one I actually made a video about. So this has uh, big fancy wheels and it's even got casters on the back, so it'll turn, making it a bit easier to maneuver than just having straight wheels. And um, I just found out that I'm going to get a bunch more of these discs, uh, which, uh, and I'm hoping it's going to be that type there. So I could just, I'm hoping to at, le at least get one, so I can make just a quad of those, else this is going to have to stay horribly ugly. Differentiation is good, uh, but uh, the uh, uh, this kind of draw is good because it's uh, kind of low, which would allow me to drop this shelf down one step. If I have to take to that one here or something like it, it's it's not going to turn out quite as nice. Yeah, I'm thinking this is going to be the new camera shelf uh, because <laughs> my camera shelf is something absolutely abhorrent. That's it. That uh, <laughs> in there, tucked away in the corner, getting constantly banged by the door. This is where all my camera gear goes normally in standby. <laughs> it's just a pile of trash of a moment. You know, thousands upon thousands of euros tucked away there. At least if someone breaks in, they're not going to find it because it just looks like a pile of crap. Uh, I also have uh, cut this up to size uh, because uh, just going by, by the layout, I, I know myself, I tend towards uh, small working areas. I tend to not move around a lot uh, when I'm working. I do that. Uh, pretty much every bench I use. So if I don't have something to kind of stick out there and allow me to put stuff on, uh, this half of the bench is just going to be a pile of shit in no time. So this is uh, the shelf which used to be in this corner there, the original shelf. I just cut it down to size, measured about 60 by 60, uh, if it were a square, so for this cut-off section here. and. Uh, this is going to take a few things nicely. I'm going to put one of my test speakers on it. That's probably the main attraction since I want to have a couple of test speakers, obviously, given what I do. And uh, I don't know, I might put the stereo on, but I think I might have enough width to actually fit the stereo. But uh, I never actually had a stereo to off, so it's probably going to be awkward. Hmm. Uh, down here, I have mounted a couple of these cheapo IKEA. A towel hangers, it's like a euro a piece, and I use these to hang various test leads and stuff. And uh, that's also a bit of a clutter decontamination issue because I'm constantly using those. And if I have to be constantly mongering around here, I'm not going to allow myself to fill this area up with shit because it's just going to get in the way and annoy me. So, fingers crossed, that's actually gonna work. Uh, I'm also considering uh, putting a shelf here. That's a bit of an eh, because it does protrude out a fair bit if I want it to be useful since it's so high up and I'm such a short guy sitting down low. So I'd have to have it about f better part of 40 centimeters deep. These are, I believe, uh, 32 centimeters deep. So it would have to go up to here, roughly. And that's pretty much the setup I've had before, and that's been 
Uh, it's just darkened this whole area up since it's, it's just so high up, it, it, it gets in the way of the light, so I'm very torn about it. Uh, since I'm actually using three of these uh, metal units now, I've previously just been using two since I've, it's been so cramped. Uh, I'm thinking maybe the top of those is uh, going to be sufficient for various tools and stuff. I mean, the, the idea I'm going for with this build, obviously, is to have all my gear to the right and just tools in front of me. Uh, it, previously, I had all the gear on the shelves there and kind of some thrown in a pile to the right, and there's going to be no more of that. So, oh, mm -hmm. well, you we'll just have to see how it pans out. I need to work on it as I actually use the place. Uh, I am really happy about how the shelves turned out though. Even the fact that it's got this giant hole back there does wonders. At, at first I was just, ugh, god, it's a big hole that's gonna make it horrible to mount it. Uh, it went very well, I've got it mounted two mounts there and uh, uh, this mount here and it's it's pretty much rock solid. It's gonna be a bit, you know, I don't want to lay it down with 200 kilos, but it's gonna be decent enough uh, for, for to hold a bit of gear and uh, I completely forgot where I was going with that oh yeah and the hole as you can see it allows light into the corner and that is incredibly important uh, because when you have these giant corner shelves it just gets dark it gets incredibly dark in there and uh, you know that's just annoying you're trying to wire something up or do anything uh, unplug a piece again, you, you have to bring out your flashlight and it, it's just a big pain. Uh, in hindsight, I should have made a bigger corner cutout uh, on the two shelves I manufactured. That's just a, a, an 18 by 18 a triangle cutout and the same thing goes for that one. Uh, but uh, that's of course in order to respect the fact that the mounting there is at 20 centimeters. So I, uh, it, it, this top one actually couldn't mount if I made that a lot bigger. It would just be all horrible since it wouldn't be actually resting on the mount too much at all. But yeah, all in all, I, I'm excited. Can't wait to gear this up. And uh, plan for these shelves is uh, uh, thinking I'm going to have a component cabinet on this one. This one dedicated to camera and microphone gear. Nothing else on there because I'm tired of the pile of shit I've got over there in the corner and Given how much of a gear fag I am, uh, that's gonna crowd up rather quickly uh, This one, I'm not too sure. I have spaced all the uh, Shelves in order to be able to take pieces of gear stacked on the side just for storing, you know unused equipment normal 40 4 centimeter wide stuff What's that rough? You know, 19 inch stuff without the rack ears, normal stereo with a uh, gear, and uh, you know, just shove it away. This is one of the drier, nicer rooms in the workshop, in part because I'm constantly moving around here, in part because it's got heating. Well, attempted heating in the ceiling, anyway. So we'll have to see. In this, this, there's a big risk of this just cluttering up. I'll have to uh, see what I can do. An idea I've had uh, is to just get about a million of these uh, tiny mates that I've got to here and uh, just make like pretty much occupy this whole thing as tight as I can possibly get it with tiny shelves in the back to keep just small things on and that would kind of well, like having things packed like that has a bit of a self-cleaning property since you, you can't very well clutter this thing up if you if you constantly need to get at something that's uh, there in the back. So, hmm, I'll have to see. Decisions, decisions. Those things cost money too, about a euro a piece. So, uh, that's like a four euro shelf, which, you know, it adds up. Uh, but, uh, yeah. After I'm done with this, we've still got all of this magnificent trashiness to go through. I'm not happy with this shelf, it's too small for the amount of things it's carrying and well that one's going to lose the camera stuff, it's also 
uh, not very good. I want to actually run uh, Alpha racks uh, along this entire wall and make that, you know, a decent shelf because this is just a big mess. Mm, not really sure what I'm going to do with my uh, trash boxes there. I'm constantly digging stuff into them, but uh, uh, clearly they are a bit disorganized a bit or rather too crammed full. I should actually have more junk boxes just to spread everything out a bit, but then they just cried up to reach the same state anyway. Hmm, decisions, decisions. We'll go on tomorrow. Another day has passed us by and today I've been working on the electrics. So uh, I've got a couple of these power strips installed or rather quite a few of them. Uh, so this one's uh, just uh, bolted to 2 by 4 which I've screwed uh, from the top uh, just to make it a bit more accessible to turn on and off and flick and uh, connect and what have you because if it were mounted straight to the board it would be rather annoying to see which plugs are which and uh, to plug and unplug stuff since this might not be heavily loaded might want to jump up since those are very hard to press in. Uh, on the downside uh, we have put some of these electrical channels to use. I've uh, pulled a couple of wires uh, which are to, going to go to the uh, uh, power outlets. They're just running along the floor in the corner and going off that uh, conduit there and uh, coming out here. So there's a white one and a black one. Uh, I bought uh, the white wire which I was hoping was going to be enough for uh, both uh, power channels but uh, it wasn't by a long shot so I had to dig out some rubber cable which is nice in its way because I've got two different uh, color wires now. Uh, one is uh, for the a battery backed outlet which is for you know computers and stuff uh, the others for uh, normal mains which is for devices and the test and so forth so uh, in case I plug a dead short something broken into the test outlet I won't lose my computers and stuff and lights at the same time it makes for a nicer experience so they run to uh, this uh, quad outlet under here you can even get some light uh, they're just uh, going in there with some makeshift to strain relief, just a piece of wood to clamp them down since there's nothing in a normal uh, power outlet, of course. And these uh, are uh, class also outlets, the cheapest they had, and they're very nice because uh, the way they're built on the inside is they're actually two separate uh, pairs of outlets. So, uh, and uh, they ship with the uh, just a, a bunch of little jumpers which go between them. So if you remove those, you actually have can, can have two different groups uh, of outlets. So I've obviously got the UPS and the non-UPS uh, outlet groups there. And uh, the UPS stuff, uh, we've got uh, this uh, 10 outlet strip here on UPS, which uh, is feeding onto the one on the shelf. And uh, then for, for the time being, I've only got a non-UPS uh, strip going in the conduit there, which is mounted there, and that is feeding to one of the nicer upgrades I'm going to get on the bench. Oh, let's turn this thing off so it doesn't drain its battery needles. Uh, and uh, I've also mounted one of these uh, quad outlets here. That's the top. Oh, by the way, I drill out the child protection plugs on these because they're a pain in the ass. Uh, but uh, yeah, this one's obviously got uh, two different uh, power channels coming into it as well. Uh, but uh, it's a bit of a novel solution uh, because uh, this one's just uh, going uh, straight to the uh, anchor strip uh, under the bench. So this is going to be have power as long as the brake is okay. And the power company's got its shit together. However, uh, this plug is intended to go into one of these outlets, like so, and it feeds to this uh, two-pole light switch here, which is, you know, just at the end of the bench. And uh, that feeds on back through the white wire into these two outlets. So that means that I can uh, switch these outlets very easily while uh, sitting back here without having to actually reach over and you know 
And normally I have a little uh, power outlet switch which I tick tick in order to turn stuff on and off. One of these guys, so that's pretty much my setup in the past. Tick tick. But uh, that's obviously a bit annoying if you've got something you're afraid it's going to explode here. You don't really want to bend over it in order to reach the switch. So now I can just go hand under there, tick, tick. And that's also a bit uh, faster to access uh, it, when I get used to having it here uh, than actually reaching all the way over there if there's smoke or fire starts pouring out of a device. So that is going to be very, very fancy. Uh, so the reason I've chosen to uh, actually have it uh, uh, loop through that thing uh, once is so that I can have one of these uh, plug-in wall meters installed all the time because these take a moment to boot up so you want this to be powered all the time when you're doing work so I can have this here plug the uh, plug the switch in there and uh, and have a right failure on the SD card. Hopefully this time it's gonna work. So I can have the meter plugged in here uh, on all the time, see the pay reading here when it's energized, and just uh, back off to a safe distance. And if I can find it, flick the switch, turn the thing on, without having to bend all the way over the possibly sparking, burning, smoking piece of equipment to turn it back off. So that's gonna be a very, very welcome feature. Ah, so that's about it. Uh, there's not a whole lot left to do, really. Uh, uh, more than just finishing off the electrics. I've got a bunch more power strips I'm going to try and find a use for, but well, I think we're pretty well equipped as it stands. So we're really getting close to that point where I can start carrying my gear back in. Just have to clean this big mess up and uh, promptly ignore the horrible lights for the time being because I don't have time and then start using it again. All right, time to see which one goes to which plug. I've actually got no idea, so we'll just uh, try this one. And see what fires up. Oh, if the lights go out. No fire. And that seems to be, must be the, uh, UPS one since uh, yeah, there we go. We've got the lights there. So that's our UPS power supply. Working fine. Got power there, and we're obviously going to have power there. Sweet. So let's uh, move that to the proper outlet. No power draw. Good. Well, one from the LEDs. Let's try the... Ah, oh, this, this is... Lovely. No fire. So, no power there, because this is off. Power. Meters alive. So, let's see if the switch works. Contact. Ah... Uh, that's lovely. That's absolutely beautiful. That's going to be the most useful thing I've installed in here in quite some time. Oh, glory. Fantastic. All right, and there we go. I've got pretty much all the wiring I need to have done before moving in done. So, I've just got to plan a uh, a gear layout and put everything in place. And that's of course the fun part. So the only real change I've done since, since the last clip was I installed uh, this uh, 16 port Ethernet switch here just to uh, do some networking. It's running along along the floor to the horrible Ethernet out outlet. It's uh, yeah, That's due for renovation at some stage. But uh, this the underside of the desk, it's, I'm quite happy with how it's turned out really. Uh, compared to how it was before, it's just incredible. There's actually light coming down there. You know, you, you, you can see something without having to carry a flashlight. 
and uh, all the cable conduits along the top offer far superior, far more flexible uh, cable writing than before and uh, I've even gone to the effort of making a custom power cable for that thing just to keep it short. I've got a few of those uh, IEC connectors so I might make a couple more just for shits and giggles. So yeah, uh, pretty much the first uh, order of business to set up a computer which is gonna go via 24-ish inch monitor uh, via keyboard and mouse and what have you and then move on to the uh, audio measurement gear and all that gaff. Uh, what I still am a bit uh, concerned about is uh, uh, I used to have my monitor right there, which I often use to monitor camera stuff. Uh, it's not really a good solution, I'd rather use a smartphone for it, so I'm hoping I'm going to be able to just use an app with a 800D once I get it back from a warranty fucking repair. Uh, and that's not going to be an issue, but uh, if not, I'm going to have to figure out some way to actually maintain a monitor around here, which isn't isn't going to be too much fun, really. It's not optimised for it. I'd, Ideal, I'd have like a tiny, tiny, like 10 inch monitor there because uh, all I need is one HDMI input that can handle a bunch of different uh, input settings. What with all the weird formats of these cameras put out, but I suppose eBay can probably help with that. All right, moving from one evening to another, it's finally starting to look like a workable workshop in here again. So I've been pretty much just carrying and wiring gear all day today and uh, most of the basics are up and running. Uh, we've uh, obviously got a PC there, that's uh, wired up, got pretty much all the stuff uh, uh, it needs connected, keyboard, mouse, some USBs, what have you, and it's got a fancily pulled wire going to the stereo there, which is up and running as well. Is that not beautiful? So we really are starting uh, to see why I need so many power outlets because I'm just chewing through these as I always have. I mean we've got what, four free of that one and if we go underneath we've got two, two free of that one and the non-UPS one pretty occupied as well. All the Americans are probably going, oh, fire has it, but uh, keep in mind, this is 230 volts, so that's just 10 amps for all of these. Plenty of small consumption devices wired up. So, uh, I have made a few changes, and most notably, probably, the little shelf I added there for the uh, eight, four 8 ohm uh, switchable uh, constant resistance load, and uh, adding that was an absolute pain, because I had to... Uh, get the SDS drill out and add another console, which is about two millimeters offset. So, since uh, this is such a tiny shelf here, it's absolutely horrid to actually get it straight since two millimeters is quite a lot in that uh, short distance. So, I had to shim that on one side with just a washer to get it right, but. Uh, other than that, I think it turned out pretty decent. It has kind of mongered up the computer access though, since uh, the monitor can get kind of obscured by that, but I make do that shelf, uh, seeing, seeing how I already occupied it. I always have had like a little shelfy thing somewhere around there, so I'm used to just shoving, uh, you know, my adapter boxes and uh, just little tiny bits and bobs. I have that's about 32 gigabyte card I've been looking for forever. Uh, I'm used to just shoving stuff on there, so I, if I didn't have that, this would just explode into a giant mess instantly. Uh, I'm glad I did add this for when I did, because uh, to get this in there, it's a major pain. You actually have to undo that shelf there and almost undo that one, so uh, better late than uh, later. <laughs> uh, so, what else? Uh, I have also added this little quirky piece of cut out uh, MDF just to hold my uh, power test lead. I, I've also always just had a couple of ICs and a laptop charge lead coming up here. And uh, I just uh, figured, hmm, what shape can hold the wire then? With a sharp and cut it up with a jigsaw, and it seems to be doing a decent job. I can just shove that off to the side when not in use. 
rather useful indeed. And excitingly, for the first time ever, I've actually got the scope installed permanently in a usable location. This thing has just not had any place of its own at all in the old uh, layout and it's just never gotten used because of that and, and just because I, I need the analog scope to do the uh, HP 339A properly since that's actually transform my little page upline it, it's 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 just a bit nice on the noise so I've always just ended up using the analog scope for everything and uh, having the Ryglas a carry around but uh, finally that might change we can get fancy and high tech and digital around here uh, I still am um, uh, torn about the monitoring situation here because I really do want to have some kind of uh, camera slash PC monitor right here uh, I can't just use a laptop since uh, it needs to go to obviously the uh, camera through HDMI and uh, this desktop is obviously the streaming computer since it's got HDMI inputs and I can't just use a random laptop for that unless I want to spend an absolute fortune. Uh, so I, I, this monster here has fit... Oh, you, you can shove it uh, in underneath there if you really want to but uh, it's rather old, it's 16 by 10 which is nice for office work but not nice for uh, video work and it can't handle many of the resolutions in particular this camera puts out I believe only 50p and nothing else no matter what you do so it's really annoying same goes for the microscope which is a big thing so um, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to like go out and actually buy some cheapo uh, 19 inch TV or something to get that just in order to get this support for those weird uh, non-computer resolutions because I'm I'm real not sure who else to go about. I don't have any real suitable monitor to put in there. It's a shame. Uh, over here, I've also uh, put a couple of these alpha racks in to hang my mains cords off of all. I have a couple of loose test leads, usually just one laptop lead and one IEC, and yeah, one of those figure eight things. And I've labelled up my uh, clamp hangers. These probably go better over there. So we've got uh, two hooks for plug to clamp, two hooks for plug to plug, and two hooks for uh, clamp to clamp. And I've also labelled up my tomato cans with rather simple to understand symbols which will not confuse me. Positive screwdrivers, negative screwdrivers. Hmm. What else? I am also considering how to power the JBLs because uh, I, I can't easily hook them up to the Yamaha since uh, that one's powering the uh, external outlet there which I've hung there and uh, the Sony test speakers and yeah it's only got two speaker outputs so I'm, I'm not sure. I'd have to get like an external speaker switch and I don't like the idea of having those big fancy imported speakers connected to something which may accidentally get connected to an exploding amp and go, go up and smoke sending 100 volts of DC into them. Not a pleasant thought. So, um, there, there, there's, you know, there's some space. I could, I could conceivably have just another amp sitting on here. I've got some cute little silver face units sitting in storage but uh, and on the other hand I would like to have something with a bit of power you know 50 watts per channel at least to be able to just play loud if I want to uh, but I'm sure I'll figure something out uh, oh yeah and if you're curious why some of these wires are just hanging loose rather than being ducted now these are the test wires and they need to be mobile. Uh, the grey ones are the ones which are going to the ICs coming up on the, on the bench and of course I want to be able to pull those out you know as far as possible that's why they're so long and uh, the two black ones there, one's for the uh, Rigel, the other one's for the hot air station and uh, of course those are going to be a bit mobile and flexible as well so I can't just have them ducted up permanently. Hmm. 
I think that's about it. About what I've achieved for the day. Time to go to bed. Or else time to get into those annoying issues where I have to buy stuff and yuck. Oh well. Yeah, and I took uh, the crappiest of these uh, uh, under desk drawer uh, cab cabinets and uh, just to made it into like a hole to put things into. Uh, mostly just in order to have something to hold my soldering stations uh, because I, li I like having them un under there since uh, that lets the wires always come from below. You never have the issue of a, a wire. If you, if you have your soldering station where, where the power supply is, there's always going to be that wire loop. And that just drives me crazy. It's much nicer to have it there. Of course, I've got a ridiculously long lead attached to my uh, soldering pen so I can reach everywhere, even though it's mounted quite far away. Strongly recommend you do the same. It's a level of freedom you couldn't imagine. All right, I am now going to proclaim phase one of workshop overhaul complete. Now there's still a bit of work left to do, wiring some stuff up and there's a bunch of gear I haven't really carried out yet since I want to see what's a real use and where it's best to put it and you can't just go place all your gear at once because then you're going to put something wrong and you're never going to get it right. Ah, finally. This room, it's difficult to get on this rather narrow angle camera but the size of this room has tripled even though there's pretty much the same amount of stuff in it and perhaps even some more since I've just got you know more material in here these boxes weren't here and none of this stuff was in this room it's, it's just uh, incredible really and all this floor space has been cleaned up just because we're now able to actually utilize the space there where we used to have a big useless bench ah wonderful so there's going to be pretty much two more stages to this uh, overhaul but uh, I, I don't have the time to do it right now since I have to go abroad in just a few days and I'll f I'm thinking stage two is going to be redoing the lights uh, because uh, yeah, as I outlined in the previous video, these are not very good mounts and uh, I'm thinking I, at this stage I might just uh, grab some wood and uh, pretty much clamp two 2x2s two two around this to get it as tight up to the ceiling as possible without having to drill any new holes uh, because that's just, it's always ugly drilling in concrete, you don't want to do it in real, unless you really have to. So I'm thinking making like a a wooden frame going that way, wooden frame going on the other side of that, and then just bolting your stuff into the wood uh, as required uh, is going to be a neater solution uh, than doing some kind of custom metal thing. Because wood, wood's so nice since it's so easy to attach stuff to, you don't really need to think about tapping and threading and all that. <sighs> yeah, that's about it. Time for me. To do some projects. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. Oh yeah, that 2x4 there is definitely planned and uh, intentionally installed.